Welcome to my midweek Chinese takeaway cook along. It's Wednesday, it's 6.30, and tonight I'm going to cook for you my Kung Po King prawns. Um, it's a real simple dish. I'm going to do it back to front. Um, again, I've only got the one cooker out today, so what I do, I'll crack on with the sauce after I've ran through the ingredients. Um, we'll put the sauce to one side as we're heating up the oil, and then we'll cook the king prawns, and then we'll put the two together. Normally, you'd fry the king prawns off and then make the sauce and then pop it in. So we're just going a bit back to front, but it doesn't matter because we can do these things because it's our kitchen. So for tonight, um, again, I'm using some fresh produce from my garden, so I'm not strictly sticking to my own recipe. Um, purely in a sense that I'm not using bamboo shoots and water chestnuts, I'm using produce that I've got. So um, I have here um, some homegrown onions. So these are just small onions chopped into quarters, homegrown tomatoes. Um, some homegrown carrots, some slightly bigger ones than last week. If you watched last week, they were very tiny. Um, homegrown spring onions. And then on the plate, we have chilies, which are not homegrown, a little bit of garlic, and some red pepper. Okay. Then I have my king prawns, which are deveined and shelled, but they are raw. It's really important that you use raw king prawns for this recipe. Um, for the sauce, you're going to need some sugar some hoisin sauce, uh, again this is the brand that you can buy from all supermarkets, some rice vinegar, okay, I think last week I called it rice wine vinegar, it's not rice wine vinegar, it's rice vinegar, if you don't have rice vinegar you can use um, cider vinegar, I think, I think it's called cider vinegar, or even a, like a, I think there's, anyways, not a harsh vinegar, not a malt vinegar, you don't want to use malt vinegar in this, okay, um, some tomato ketchup, some tomato puree, um, half a cup of water um, and some corn flour and water mixed together to make a slurry. And then for the coating, we're just going to use an egg and corn flour batter to make the um, prawns nice and crispy. And if you want, you can salt um, the king prawns as well. Okay, so first things first, we shall get our wok on. And to that, I'm going to add quite a lot of veg, so I'm going to add about two tablespoons of oil, okay? And all I'm going to do, I'm going to soften my vegetables first before adding all the sauce ingredients. You do need to get some cashew nuts. You, you tend to find with the Kung Po, it always comes with cashew nuts. Some takeaways will serve it um, in a batter, others won't, I like it in a batter. So first things first, guys, oil's nice and warm now in my wok. I'm going to add my chopped spring onion, my minced garlic, and my chilli. So in there you go, I'll give it a quick stir for 30 odd seconds, maybe not even that, 20 seconds, just to release some of those aromats and straight away the chilli went right up my nose and I stopped myself from sneezing and coughing then. Lovely. And then I'm going to add my onion just to soften. And what this does, it just helps bring that heat back down in the wok. Um, so my garlic doesn't burn. So now that I've got a few ingredients in there, so it's a lovely smell already. So to my onion, I'm going to add my carrots and pepper. And lastly, I'll add my tomatoes. And we're going to use the same plate to serve this dish up on, okay? And again, I'm just softening these. I don't really need to get much color on this one. We are going to make a sauce, and it is going to sit in the sauce for a good 10, 12 minutes before I serve. So uh, the vegetables will have time to soften even more so. So I'm not going to overcook them at this stage. Obviously, if you did it the right way around, where you fry the king prawns first and then make the sauce, you can cook the veggies for a little bit longer because you just want to make sure they're soft enough to eat if you like the vegetables. With just a little tiny bite, but not too crunchy. But as we're letting this sit, I'm going to speed through the sauce part of this recipe. They're all looking lovely in there. It's got a nice coating of oil. Everything's well mixed. The chilli keeps on hitting the back of my nose, which is a good sign. I've got a slight colour, not a lot, going on in my wok. Everything's starting to soften and go translucent, which is good. So I'm going to add my homegrown tomatoes. And I'm just going to give my plate a quick so it's clean cloth, so it's fine. Give that a quick wipe and that can be used then to serve my dish on. 
And I'll pop that just there out of the way. Now that my tomatoes are in, I'm going to um, start adding the sauce ingredients. And it doesn't matter at all which order you do this. So I'm going to start with two tablespoons of sugar. And this is just a rough guess. Everybody's tablespoons are slightly different unless you're using proper measuring spoons. So approximately two seconds. This is a sweet recipe, remember guys. So two tablespoons of sugar, followed by two tablespoons of my hoisin sauce. One and two. Estimate, remember guys, I told you, when you're cooking Chinese food, do it by eye, do it by taste, do it by the way it feels in the pan. Two tablespoons of vinegar. I'm gonna be a bit more cautious with this one. So I want it vinegary with a twang, but not too much. So in goes my vinegar. Followed by one tablespoon of tomato ketchup. Any brand will do. That's about one tablespoon. And then we put half a tablespoon of tomato puree. So half a tablespoon. And I give that a really good mix and then I'll add my water. And I'll give it a quick taste. So you want about half a cup of water. I've probably got a little bit more in here. So I'll add some just to see how we get away with it. I'm going to add that for a start and just let that come back up to the boil. Just making sure that that tomato puree is well and truly mixed into all of those vegetables. And like I said, because the vegetables are going to sit in this hot sauce, they will soften further just before I serve with my king prawns. Okay, quick finger dip. And I'm going to add just maybe half a tablespoon of hoisin sauce, just a little bit extra. It tastes really nice, but I just want that richer taste, I guess, you know, that more of a five spice taste I'm looking for. So I give that a good mix and I give it a good another taste. So a good another taste, I give it another taste even. Lovely, so that's perfect now. But again, you've got to do this to your own taste. So um, when you're cooking this at home, if you like it more spicy, add more chili. If you like it with more of a twang, add more vinegar. Uh, if you're a big fiend, like my youngest daughter with tomato ketchup, more, put more tomato ketchup in. It's your dish, you make it your own. So my recipes are there as a guideline. Now you can follow them to the T and you'll get fantastic results. But the best results are the ones that you tweak out and make your own. Okay, so this is just corn flour and water. My sauce is boiling, I don't need a lot. And as I add this, I'm just gonna make sure I keep my sauce moving. I don't want clumps. But I just need it to thicken slightly. There we go. And there's our sauce made, and it really is as simple as that. So I just move that onto my cork mat. Now, have a nice, it's a nice deep dish, but it's quite narrow because obviously I want to try and get some depth of oil in there. So let's get the heat on. And I'm going to add about three to five centimeters of oil just into the bottom of this pan. Um, this is just sunflower oil today, because that's what I was able to pick up from the co-op. So let's just add this in. So I've got about three and a half centimetres of oil in there. That should be plenty. I've only got about 14 king prawns to fry. And while that's doing that, I'll get my glove on and we shall cut our king prawns. So if you have trouble finding decent king prawns uh, and you don't have a fish market, see if there's a local cash and carry. So a macro or a booker. Um, I know some places that have best ways. 
I picked up a big square block of um, king prawns which, which were deveined and peeled already from my local cash and carry. Um, defrosted what I needed, cooked king prawns yesterday for mum and dad's anniversary and I've got some more in the freezer. So uh, you get plenty. Okay, so there's about 14 or 16 king prawns in there. Now, if you, again, if you want to season, you can. I'm not going to bother because the sauce is quite strong. Um, to that, I'm going to add, it's about three quarters of a whisk egg. Obviously, you can add the full egg, um, but you will end up with quite a lot of leftover. Okay, so in goes my whisk egg, egg. And I'll just massage this in to my king prawns. So if you can just see in there, and all I'm trying to do is get those king prawns just to take it, take up a bit of that egg, okay? And I'm not crushing them in between my hands, I'm just gently massaging it through. Now to this, I'm going to add about a handful of corn flour, and I'm slowly just going to turn that, just so the prawns are coated in egg and corn flour, so I've got a nice, thick, sticky batter and then I just keep adding the corn flour now until I can separate the king prawns into their individual pieces. I really feel like I'm on a cookery show today, being very precise actually. Do you know why? It's not too hot and I didn't go to bed this afternoon. <laughs> Normally on a Wednesday, because I know that I'm going to be doing a show, I think, oh, you know what, I'm going to get 20 minutes, half an hour, just, just a quick cat nap to recharge. Problem is, it doesn't recharge me, it just wipes me out. So instead, oh, I've just been flicking through Netflix and Sky Movies to see what, there's, what's, what, we, you know, what I can watch later on tonight, so. So, my king prawns have all separated and there's a good corn flour and egg batter now. And I've just got to wait for that oil to come up to heat. So I'm gonna take that off for a second, because it's gonna take a couple more minutes. So. If you've got a food thermometer, you want to get your oil up to about 170 to 180. King prawns will only take two to two and a half minutes to cook, even big ones like this, okay? You don't want to overcook them because they're just going to go dry. Um, and you don't want to undercook them, obviously. I'm actually allergic to raw shellfish, so if I touch them with my hands, my hands start to itch. Mum and dad's fault, tis child abuse parents. Um, by making me peel 10 cases of king prawns at a time, as a child, I'm going to pick up these allergies. So thank you very much. And I think my oil is hot enough. Again, these are only going to take about two or three minutes to fry off. And we're getting an instant sizzle, which is great. Three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16, I was right. Lovely, lovely. Let's just give this a quick move around to make sure they're not sticking on the bottom. And then I have some kitchen paper already prepared. And you don't have to use kitchen paper. If you have a wire rack, by all means, just um, let them drain on a wire rack. That's absolutely fine. Oh, look, we've got talcum powder all over my shirt now from the gloves. Colour's still looking good up there, which is great. So obviously when I edit this video, you'll see in the pan, there's a lot of water escaping, a lot of bubbles. I'm just gonna let this die down for about another minute and then we're done. And then we can serve. And I've got my rice on in the rice cooker already. And I've got a fantastic meal for tonight. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the oil off and I'm just gonna pull my king prawns out one at a time, draining them on my kitchen paper. And you can see that they're lovely golden brown now. Got a lovely crisp corn flour batter coating them. And um, I can't wait to sink my teeth into these actually. So, a few more. So unlike the chicken and the pork, you don't have to cook this as long obviously. So there is still a little bit of action going on in the pan, but it's absolutely fine. These prawns will be cooked in this time, definitely. Now, normally um, you would heat this sauce back up again. I'm not going to, because I've got hot oil, hot oil in this pan. So warm your sauce back up if you've done it like me. Pop in your 
king prawns and give them a quick stir and just coat each one with this lovely rich aromatic hoisin vinegary tomatoey sweet lovely sauce and I'll put this over here and I'll give my chopping board a quick wipe over I really burnt myself then and then I'll just do this so you can see what's going on and I'm just going to pour on my Kung Po King Prawns onto my plate and then I've got one last job to do so there's that let's give you a wipe last thing we've got to do guys is take a handful of these cashew nuts and using brute strength, I'm just gonna crunch them up and just sprinkle them over the top. In fact, I'm gonna do a couple more because I like cashew nuts on this dish. Give my hand a quick wipe off. And with that, I'm gonna turn around to you guys and say, give this dish a go. It's one of my favorites, and I think I say that every week as well. My Kung Po King prawns, made for you in 25 minutes from start to finish and that's with me waffling on and um, please go and give it a go thank you again for tuning in and I uh, hopefully I shall see you next Wednesday but until then have a fantastic week go and enjoy whatever you're doing I actually like it when it's like this and I can't wait to dip my toes in a big sea with the rain pouring down on me so I shall see you later okay bye bye